Hello, my name is Kays and welcome to part one of a two-part tutorial where I'm going to show you how to swap the CPU from a first-generation Mac Pro to go from um, two dual-core Intel Xeon chips to uh, two quad-core Intel Xeon chips. This is uh, going to double the number of cores. You're going to go from four cores to eight cores and uh, almost double the uh, performance of uh, your machine. A word of warning, this is a tricky operation. If you don't know what you're doing, this might seriously damage your machine. Uh, if you've never opened a computer, uh, changed hard drive, added more RAM, you might seriously consider getting the help of a friend. What you should also know is that uh, this is going to void any sort of warranty or Apple extended care warranty that you might have on your computer. Also, I'm going to try my best to explain how to do this, but I cannot take any responsibility for you damaging or destroying your computer. So uh, do this at your own risk. Okay, so first things first, uh, you want to make sure that you have the right model of Mac Pro. So to do this, go to the Apple menu, select about this Mac, and then click on the more info button. That's going to give you more detailed info about your machine. And under model identifier, it should say Mac Pro 1,1. And what that means is that it's a first generation Mac Pro. If you have a newer Mac Pro, chances are you can probably follow this tutorial and the steps would uh, probably be very, very similar. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to be performing this on a first generation Mac Pro. Next you want to get your hands on a pair of Intel Xeon X5365 CPUs. Those are quad core uh, running at 3 gigahertz and uh, you want to make sure that you get the SLAED configuration. That's the configuration that works best for this Mac Pro. You're also going to need some thermal paste and I recommend the brand Arctic Silver and uh, you should be able to find this at any electronic store or Radio Shack. Next you're going to need a flat piece of plastic like an old credit card or driver's license or in my case a Panera card that I'm not using. You're also going to need some uh, thermal paste cleaner and purifier. You can find the Arctic Clean at uh, Radio Shack as well. If you can't find it, uh, grab yourself some uh, rubbing alcohol. Just make sure that it's at least 90% pure. We're also going to need some um, coffee filters and q-tips. I would also recommend that you get your hands on an anti-static wrist pad or uh, some anti-static gloves. You should be able to find those also at the electronics store. This is going to prevent you from accidentally discharging some static electricity onto the motherboard. You're also going to need a couple of screwdrivers. Uh, I recommend a short and stubby one with a Phillips head on it and one that's uh, at least five inches long with uh, ideally a Torx T15 size tip. If you cannot get your hands on a Torx T15, uh, you can and, uh, try to get a uh, three millimeter hexagonal Allen type tip. Last but not least, I recommend having a second computer nearby that you can use to check information online or watch this video as you're doing the procedure. First thing, I'm gonna connect the uh, anti-static wristband to the chassis of the computer, which is all made of metal. Um, now for this to work, the computer needs to be plugged into a power strip that needs to be plugged into a wall outlet. However, the power strip, this is very important, the power strip needs to be turned off so that we don't have any electricity actually going into the computer and uh, we wanna make sure that the computer is not receiving any electricity, everything needs to be turned off. However, we do want that ground to be connected to your house's main ground through the outlet. So um, connect the computer to the power strip and make sure that the power strip is turned off. Okay, so inside the Mac, what we're gonna need to do is we need to remove some of the components. Uh, we can start from uh, the top two drives. You don't need to remove all four of them. We're gonna need to remove the fan assembly in the front and we're gonna need to at least loosen up the memory cage so that we can shift it on the side and that's gonna allow us to pop out this uh, top metal piece. Removing the drives is uh, pretty straightforward. You just pull them out and uh, the nice thing about the drives is that they're numbered from one through four. The memory comes in like two different um, daughter boards and uh, uh, just, you know, like when you remove them, just uh, make sure that you're keeping straight which one is on top and which one is on the bottom. So now looking inside the empty RAM bay, you will see two screws at the very bottom of it that are going to be loosened. And then there's like two other screws that are kind of hidden. You can't see them, but just take my word for it. They're there. And uh, once again, you want to loosen uh, those four screws and that's going to allow us to loosen the cage enough to be able to uh, shift it ever so slightly to the right so that we can um, remove uh, the CPU cover. I'm going to just use my long screwdriver to uh, access those uh, two um, screws in the bottom of the case and just uh, loosen them up a bit. Then I'm gonna get like my short screwdriver and use it to uh, loosen up these two little screws on the bottom. Now the whole uh, memory 
cage should be fairly loose and um, we should be able to kind of like push it a little bit to the right uh, without forcing it too much but that's going to give us enough give that we can um, snap that CPU cover out of the little guides. Uh, there's just enough space that we can do it. You know just uh, be careful because it's uh, held in place by some uh, little plastic uh, little tongues there so you don't want to snap them off but you know but at the same time just you know don't be afraid to put a little bit of pressure to to get that cover out and uh, there it goes. So with the cover off now we can see the two heat sinks. Okay so the next thing that we want to do is we want to remove this uh, fan assembly right here that's in the front of the computer and uh, the thing about this fan assembly is that it's held in place by only one screw and it's um, a really teeny tiny screw towards where like the hard drives used to be I don't know if you can see it right here it's it's right there you're just gonna need once again like the long um, Phillips head screwdriver and we're just gonna unscrew that screw and um, lift the fan assembly out of the chassis I've been told this is like one of the trickiest uh, things to do here because uh, it can be a little bit difficult and uh, you know once again you want to be patient you want to uh, grip it fairly tightly but at the same time just be careful that you're not using too much uh, blunt force and you're breaking anything you just want to shift it a little bit back and forth and uh, pull it straight out and uh, hopefully with a little bit of uh, movement it should come out and uh, there it goes. Okay, so this is the fan assembly and uh, this might not be a bad time if you want to dust it a little bit or, uh, you know, before you put it back in, it's probably going to be like kind of dirty. Okay, there's one more thing that we're going to need to do and that is to remove this little plastic separator. We're going to do this very carefully. Uh, once again, it's a little tricky, but uh, thanks to the handy dandy uh, Panera or uh, whatever uh, plastic uh, card that you have, we can uh, uh, slowly um, push it through the space and um, be able to kind of force some of these latches open. And uh, by doing this, we should be able to like kind of gently push this uh, plastic separator out of the way so it should come unlatched. Once again, like take your time, be patient, and uh, you should be able to kind of get it out of there. This is gonna give us access to all of the screws so that we can loosen them and um, take out the heat sinks. Behold the heat sinks. Uh, they're pretty massive, but uh, they need to be because uh, the chips put out quite a bit of heat. Now there are four screws that are holding each uh, heat sink tied to the chip, uh, and we're gonna need to um, unscrew those. However, before we do that, um, it's very important to note that there's uh, a little wire that's running from each heat sink, and it's plugging into the board. This is um, a thermal sensor that tells the computer how hot the heat sinks are. And um, before we can fully remove them, we really need to uh, unplug those two cables from the motherboard. And this is very critical because uh, the last thing that you want is to forget about unplugging them and then you're pulling the heat sink out and the cable snaps off and then you're in a heap of trouble. Very carefully, we're going to unplug these two plugs. One of them is pretty clearly visible to the left of the top heatsink, and the other one is actually located inside the memory cage at the very, very bottom of the computer. And I'll try to show you this as closely as possible as I can. I don't know if you can really see it on the video, but uh, there's a little wire that gets plugged into the motherboard right there at the very bottom. It looks identical to the one that's um, to the left of the top heatsink. You should be able to identify it and be able to um, pull it straight out. Uh, hopefully if your fingers are not as big as mine, it shouldn't be too big of a deal. Okay, so now that we have unplugged the thermal sensors from the two heat sinks, uh, we want to um, unscrew them from the motherboard. And uh, the way we're gonna do this is um, we're gonna use an X pattern. We want to alternate starting with this screw number one, then we go to this other one on the opposite side, and then uh, we go back to the front side and then we go to the one that's on the opposite side and uh, this is going to prevent us from uh, accidentally warping uh, the heat sink and uh, keep in mind that the screws are not going to come off completely they're going to stay attached to um, the heat sink itself uh, this is actually kind of like a cool design because I really uh, dislike when um, all the screws come loose and then you tend to lose them or you have to like really keep track of where they go gently pull the heat sink straight out and there's the thermal paste that's kind of holding it in place a little bit but it should pop right out and um, and here we go 
Okay, so we're gonna repeat the same process. Once again, we're gonna zigzag the way that we unscrew the heatsink. And here we go, just kind of doing the same thing. Okay, and then we just pull it straight out. And uh, once again, just be careful with that little heatsink uh, sensor uh, cord. Uh, just make sure that it's coming out of the memory cage without uh, getting pulled and torn off. This is end of part one. Uh, check out video part two to see how it all ends.